Jesus says, Come to me, my lost and lonely ones. Release the old baggage. July 15, 2015 Words from Jesus through Sister Claire Spoken by Jackie Jesus began, No good thing will I withhold from those who love me, according to my purpose for their lives. I have not forsaken anyone. People forsake me. They don't trust me when their prayers aren't answered according to their advantage, as they see it. This causes so many to fall away from me. They have no concept of how I love them or how infinite my wisdom is. Rather, they blame me for the things that go wrong in their lives, even though it is Satan who is the culprit. They come to me and pray that things would be different, but I cannot answer them with what they want because I see the path ahead and I know the road they must travel. From time to time you get atheists who have been jaded by phony Christians or Christians that are less perfect. Yet when atheists act badly, it goes by unnoticed. I wish they would apply the same standards to their atheist brothers and sisters that they apply to my children. I wish I could tell them, my children aren't perfect any more than you are, but they are forgiven, and many, many are trying to change with my help. You don't always see what's behind that Christian's life. You don't see what they were like before I got a hold of them. I'm thinking of myself now, Lord, who, not good, not good at all, selfish, proud, deeply entangled in materialism and impressing people, not able to form deep friendships, give or receive love. But something in me changed when the Lord got hold of me. It took years for him to change me, but it did change. I'm not perfect. I still have problems with all those things, but not anything like I was living before. Love came into your life, the kind of love you had always dreamed of, a holy, loving companion. I came and revealed to you who I am indeed and who you are to me. So special, so very special. You had never had anyone treat you like that. You had never ever been understood by others. You never felt secure in your life until I entered into your heart. You knew beyond the shadow of a doubt that I am God and yet have nothing better to do than hang around with you, guiding you, protecting you, and teaching you about my kingdom. Your church experience was not any better than any of your other experiences. You weren't accepted there any more than you were accepted in the non-Christian community. But one thing you did have, a personal relationship with me. You touched the hem of my garment day after day, and through that you survived the bad things that happened to you, even at church. You see, religion and God bear no resemblance to one another. Religion is a system fostered by men to get closer to God, whereas I embrace you without the rules and regulations, even without the knowledge of my name. There are those who know me in their hearts and spirits and follow all I ask them to do. Then someday, when the time is ripe, I reveal myself to them. Yet there are others who have been handled so roughly in their lives, they have no hope of love or of being accepted. I must surprise them with my love. I must take them in a moment they are least expecting and shower them with my profound, unconditional love. There are many who blame me for every bad thing that has happened in their lives, because they don't want to give up their sin. Somewhere inside their hearts, they hear my voice, 
But the world and its allurements overpower them and they ignore it until it's too late. I'm always calling, always waiting, and I'm always with them, wanting to bring healing into their lives. But they must at least be willing to give up sin and receive my love. The pleasures of the flesh call much more loudly than I, so I must wait until the flesh is old and weak. But even then there is no guarantee that the bitterness they are holding on to will allow them to hear me. So I allow them to languish in nursing homes until I can reach them and bring them home. Oh, how sad it is when a soul has closed the door on my love and has nothing in this world to turn to. Alone, abandoned many times through their own fault, they are so convinced of their own personal righteousness that there is no room for repentance. All is the fault of others. They were the innocent victims. God is to blame for all. Claire, I want you to love the unlovable. Go out of your way for those who have rejected me. Be my hands, my feet, my mouth, and my ears. At least in that final moment, I can reason with them. I can remind them of your kindness, even when they didn't deserve it. This, many times, is the very last straw on their resistance, and they break. A flood of tears, a deep knowledge of their sins, and an even greater knowledge of how enormously special they are to me so special that I endured torture to bring them to heaven with me forever. I treasure them, I love them, and I embrace them, never to part. These are the days when many souls will be rescued in this way. That is why I'm constantly admonishing you to love the unlovable. They are the most destitute of all even and especially those who have known wealth. Lord, you are blamed for all the terrible things the Israelites were commanded to do. Few seem to care to find out why you did what you did when you ordered the armies to murder men, women and children and just totally wipe out the town. People don't understand that. And that's why they see you as being too harsh, a terrible God. They did not hear the terrifying, heart-rending screams of infants when they were laid in red-hot metal balls and sacrificed to Moloch. They did not see the perversion the people had with the animals. Not even the animals could escape their wickedness. They did not see the mating rituals with demons who impregnated them with evil and demonic powers. Little has been understood down through the ages as to why my people had to destroy every living thing. Yet my word is not lacking in explanations. I make it clear that the wickedness was beyond repair. And now you are approaching the days of Noah as it was in the days of Noah. Yes, every perversion and wickedness will be allowed by law. The fondling of young children, sex with animals, men with men and women with women. All of it is coming just as surely as I am. It is here but still shunned. Not for long. The laws that have been signed and are in the works will make every detestable practice more legal than pornography. Now there will be no age limits. All may come and see and try it for themselves. After all, it brings pleasure, and pleasure is your right and your freedom. I'm calling to you, my children, my wayward ones. Forsake your loneliness, forsake the lies, the darkness, the confusion. Come, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. 
you will find rest for your soul and unconditional love for your heart. I will never turn you away. I will never forsake you. Rather, your life shall grow brighter and brighter, going from glory to glory. I am not a man that I should lie. I have good in store for you, not evil. I have gifts and talents for you, things you've longed to do. Who do you suppose put that longing in you? Now I want to bring fulfillment and happiness to your life. Your sins have only brought you grief and disappointment. It's time to make a change, time to release all the old baggage and start anew, fresh, born again. I'm calling to you, my lost ones. Come to me. I will embrace you and ring you round with songs of gladness and thanksgiving for returning to the very womb that bore you. Yes, I will dress you in fine linen and place a ring upon your finger, sandals upon your feet, and we shall walk together as one. Just tell me you are tired of being hurt, tired of hurting others, that you are sorry for the sinful things you have done. Ask my forgiveness, then hand over your life to me. I will cherish you, I will lead and guide you, I will never forsake you. I will lead you into the eternal joy in my Father's kingdom in heaven. Say this from your heart, Jesus forgive me, I give you my life, teach me, lead me, and never ever depart from me.